Welcome back to WandaVision. Um, we're not starting off with the Marvel logo. What is going on? Alright, this episode is not starting off like... Oh, it's the snap! It's when everyone came back from the snap. So she got snapped out too? Interesting. Oh, her mom! Did she miss, like, the passing of her mom? Your mom... She died, honey. Oh, that's so sad. What? My mother, the, the procedure went well. You you said so yourself. Clean margins, you're just charging that her That's five years ago. Thanks a lot, Thanos. You just f fucked everything up. Well, this episode is starting way, way different than I thought. I'm, I'm down for it, though. This is cool. Alright, so I'm guessing this is, like, the Monica episode. We're just getting everything going on with her and S.W.O.R.D. Captain Monica Rambo. Director Tyler Hayward. Captain. Captain. Director. So wait, does that mean S.W.O.R.D.'s been around since before the snap? Can't say I'm surprised, Captain. Okay, I I'm How surprised. How are the numbers for the Mom built this place from the ground up. You grew up here. Wait. You should have been here to help name the replacement. <laughs> Maria Rambeau the was choice. the one who, like, Hopefully built up choice. S.W.O.R.D.? I wasn't gonna say it. I mean, it makes sense. After, you know, Carol and everything. She, yeah. she believed you'd come back. Aww. So, Westview is in New Jersey. Hmm. Name's E. Wu. FBI. <laughs> What's up, Agent Wu? Who's the none of them missing person? Either. No such place. That's why I keep telling your G-man here, but he won't listen. Uh, I see. Nobody's supposed to go in. And that cop car just straight up disappeared. Hmm. Could that be the helicopter that Wanda you? finds? Still very confusion. Rambo. Oh. <laughs> hmm. So it doesn't seem like the force is keeping anybody out. Hey, Darcy, what's up? I just rewatched Thor 2. Still not the greatest movie, but she was funny. I'm a chemical engineer. No one cares. <laughs> so those were the noises we heard in the first or the second episode. Really looking forward to the commemorative t-shirt. <laughs> colossal amount of CMBR. Which is? CM. Cosmic microwave background radiation. Thank you. There are longer wavelengths superimposed over the noise here. The TV episodes that we've been watching? But why? Still not really answering us yes, as to stores will take you straight into town. how this was created. Try to find anything you can. Oh, is this the beekeeper? Someone must really miss you back at Quantico. No, sir. Softball season's over, sir. <laughs> He's dead, right? Not blipped. Dead. Yep. Twice. Twice dead. What am I looking at? So you're saying the universe created a sitcom starring two Avengers? Get me a I'm still thinking Mephisto, now. but... Are we recording this? Never stop. Maybe just I one? Need analysis. <laughs> so this really was her. Um... In that first episode, people were right about that. First and foremost, let's keep going. Yes, please. Give me some answers to other people. Why is everything always like that hexagon shape? Okay, thank you for asking me as well. Can we get Agatha? I mean, Agnes? You know, whatever her name is. The next time she's washing dishes, which by my count happens about once an episode, barf. We'll shoot a <laughs> signal to that Pop quiz, Wanda. Uh, so what we saw doesn't seem to actually happen in the episode. I think you've been crawling for a while, dude. Why would it change him to that, though? Turn that into a jump rope? What the fuck? You have a tiny little FBI badge. You, oh, you have a chip? So this was part of the episode, then. Yes, please show me what happened right here, please. Who are you? I don't know. Oh shit. You're not my neighbor. And I want you to leave. Holy no. shit. Even even more now, I feel like she's definitely the one doing this. On purpose, she has created this universe. Oh, what the fuck? What? This is our home. Okay, she's totally the one in charge of what's happening here. I have everything under control. Mm, Vision definitely knows that something's wrong, though. Why do we get the feeling this is the end of the episode? No! Why would you do that to me? 
This shit's just getting better and better. I'm so invested. Okay, so much to talk about. I love that we focused this entire episode from S.H.I.E.L.D.'s perspective of things, because now we know 100% S.H.I.E.L.D. has literally nothing to do with any of this. They aren't any of the people living in the town, they're not the people that created this problem, unless there's some like deep conspiracy shit going on there, which I don't think is the case. And from what I could gather, it seems like most of the people in that town are genuinely just people that live there. As far as I could tell, the only two characters they did not name were Dottie and Agnes. So that makes me think that Dottie is definitely in some way, shape, or form a major player here. And Agnes for sure, because now more than ever, I'm like, she's fucking Agatha Harkness. <laughs> like, there's no getting around it at this point. She is 100% Agatha. You cannot convince me otherwise until the show says, nope, you're wrong. I thought it was very interesting starting the episode from Monica's perspective, who had been uh, dusted by the snap. It started with her reforming and coming back, which was very cool seeing how like a hospital deals with that scenario where just all of a sudden it's flooded with all these people who have been gone for five years. And I just love the continuity of the MCU, how they're like, oh no, I mean, the snap happened and it's not just gonna be written off as, you know, yep, that happened. It seems like the ramifications of that are felt with so many characters and with so many projects. Like, for all I know, this could be the last time they ever reference it, but I kind of highly doubt that. And of course, they confirmed that Geraldine is Monica, which I would say most Marvel fans already knew because, you know, the casting news was announced a long time ago. I specifically called her Geraldine and played it safe when it came to her, just in case there's anyone watching who wasn't aware of that. But now we can all talk about it freely. <laughs> And I was not expecting S.W.O.R.D. to have been around for as long as it has. If anything, it kind of sounds like S.W.O.R.D. has been around as long as S.H.I.E.L.D. has. Or not as long, but has been around at the same time as S.H.I.E.L.D. And I had assumed it was the replacement for S.H.I.E.L.D., not just another organization altogether working, not necessarily alongside it, but around the same time period. I wonder if we're gonna see those two policemen in another episode. I feel like we will, but that was really strange how they were like, there is no Westview, we're from Eastview. And I don't quite understand why. Like, were they just trying to throw the FBI off? Just trying to play dumb? Are they Hydra agents? And that universe did not seem like it put up any kind of fight to keep out the the beekeeper guy or monica it just kind of pulled them right in but the residents of that town have mentioned a couple times or alluded to the fact that they cannot leave and we never really saw what happened to the beekeeper guy like when she rewound the episode does that mean he just also rewound back out of there or what the fuck happened with that and it's almost weird how this episode had comedy in it but more the typical mcu style comedy with no laugh track. I didn't realize how accustomed I had become to hearing the laugh track over everything, so it was actually kind of weird when someone would make a joke and you didn't hear it. And thank the Lord they showed the full scene of what happened with Wanda and Monica, which I will reiterate again, that to me proves Wanda knows exactly what's going on here. She's just playing dumb to make sure that Vision and the others also fall in line. And she knew full well that Monica was not meant to be here with them. And she did it in such a vicious way too. And there's that moment right after she did it where she looked kind of appalled at the fact that she did that, which does lead some credence to the theory that maybe Mephisto is really behind this, or Agnes, or someone is kind of controlling her, or at the very least egging on those antagonistic thoughts in her head. Not really sure. But even then, I don't know, I could definitely see Wanda just being a bit surprised at her own animosity in that situation. And that was very oddly disturbing when Wanda looked back at Vision and it was the version of Vision that was dead with his infinity stone like ripped out which makes me think that's what 
she's actually seeing. Like, she's basically reanimated this dead version of his body and then gave the actually rather creepy line of her being like, I have everything under control, just let me take care of this. Very odd stuff. Um, and I'm actually really happy that this episode didn't reveal everything. It wasn't like, okay, here's all your questions answered. It was pretty much like, here's some half answers. Here's the answer to what's going on with S.H.I.E.L.D., but not really what's going on with Wanda, not how this all got started, and not who else could be behind this. It's keeping the mystery very much in flex, which is a smart choice. Cinematography in this episode was great because now we have the more cinema quality as opposed to television quality. Music was very good because now, again, it's more cinema style. It's more like the regular MCU that we're used to. It's not the sitcom-y kind of quirkiness and no laugh track. In terms of acting, I definitely have to give this one to Tayona Paris. I really like how she plays the character of Monica. It's very reminiscent of how um, the character Maria was. And the fear that she has when Wanda is approaching her is very palpable. I think she did an excellent job with that. Editing and pacing was great. Maybe a bit on the slower side, but considering the information that was trickling in, it, it wasn't like too slow or anything. There was definitely reveals coming at you left and right while still maintaining the mystery. And even though this episode was only about 28 minutes long, maybe a little less if you take out the previously on, it didn't feel too short or anything. I felt like this was just about the right length that I was expecting. I mean, I would definitely prefer more if you want to give me a 45, 50 minute episode, hell yes. But they do seem to want to keep the mystery going and I don't really see how you could do that and extend this to that length. So I think the pacing was good, editing was awesome. Overall, I'm gonna give this episode, honestly, I'm gonna give it a 9.7 out of 10. So far, it's my favorite of the four episodes that have shown. And I've said it many times before, when you cut away from the action of the main story to explain things. I typically don't like it, but in this case, the sitcoms aren't really the main story. They're kind of the distraction from the main story. So if anything, the first, you know, two and a half episodes were a distraction essentially, but this episode was all main story, all figuring out what the hell is going on here. The only thing I'm a little worried about is more than likely the next episode is going to be another sitcom heavy one because I would assume we're going to jump back to Wanda and Vision probably in the 80s sitcom now. I could see a lot of people being upset that we went from the more MCU style episode that we had here back to the sitcom stuff. But I happen to love the sitcom stuff so I certainly am looking forward to that. And I think with the reveals that we've had in this episode, the amount of weird things happening in that House of M universe is going to continue to escalate to a point where Wanda just can no longer keep up the charade. At least that's what I'm thinking. So I cannot wait for the next episode. I'll see you all there. And that's about it.